All right, welcome back. This is Griff. We're on Endless Summer, Book Two, Chapter Two. You journey across a surreal paradise to save your friends, but the island threatens to trap you forever. So. Act Four, Chapter Two. Time is of the essence. So we're starting at the Celestial. The man in the bespoke suit grins at his son. Aren't you going to say hello to your father? Alistair stands, motionless, his eyes ablaze. Grace nudges him. Alistair? I have many things to say to you. Hello is not one of them. Somehow you inherit no qualities of mine, and yet you have your mother's tongue. Truly a miraculous feat. Tension fills the strange, sterile museum hidden beneath the Celestial's grand atrium. Yo, this is super awkward. Imagine what it's like for me, Mr. Sow. Can any of you explain what my son is doing here? What are you talking about? You invited me. I got your email after I wrote you. Rourke knits his eyebrows for a moment, then relaxes. Right, of course. My apologies. My memory is still coming to me. Rourke looks around at the strewn glass on the floor. He lingers by the empty pedestal where the amber idol had stood. And what, pray tell, happened here? We... You, Alba Michelle, shut up and hide the idol behind your back out of sight. Everything was smashed up before he found this place. I apologize for the condition of the resort, Mr. Rourke. I... Save the groveling, Lila. At the very least, you managed to keep our most honored guests alive all this time. How long have you been here, anyway? What day is it? December 27th, 2017, sir. Rourke turns to see Iris's hologram flickering behind him. His face softens. Iris. Good morning, sir. Time is based on internal clock. Internet connection to atomic clock unavailable. December 27th. That long? And, and you're, you're alive. How? State your version. 0.9.1. And a backup copy, of course. Tell me, all of you, how did you find this version of Iris? How have you managed to stay alive here for over six months? Bro, I don't think you get the situation. You are going to answer our questions or else. Or else what? Craig grabs him by the collar and lifts him clear off the floor, pinning him to the wall. Rourke just smiles down at him. You want to find out, amigo? Uh, I would really like the chance to get some bonus points with Craig. 73% is good gambling odds. But honestly, I, I kind of want to see Craig beat the crap out of him. Put him down, put him down. Put him down, Craig. The hell, dude, you're on his side? Okay, that backfired, great. <laughs> no, it's just, we've gotta at least tell him what's going on. Yeah, I see how it is. Craig puts Rourke down roughly. Rourke smooths his lapels. Now then, where were we? You quickly recap for Rourke everything that's happened. The arrival, the Watchers kidnapping Diego, the time portals. Ah, I have a clearer picture of the situation now. Come along. Rourke heads for the stairs. Whoa, hold on. We've got questions for you. Of course you do. There will be occasion for that later, unless you want to be here when they return. And who returns? 
Why, the hostels. You told me that you had sent some of them through the portals before sending yourselves. Obviously, that means that those hostels emerged just minutes before you did. Surely they immediately returned to their stronghold. But once their leaders realize what this means, they'll be coming back for you. You must go at once. What are you talking about? Go where? To rescue your friend, of course. I can't have guests perish at my establishment. Could you imagine the Yelp reviews? Besides, the hostel's home will be briefly undefended as they send their warriors here to collect you. You know the way? I know the silent like the back of my hand. Come now. Time is of the essence. With that, Rourke bounds up the steps to the atrium. Your friends look at each other and follow him. Hang back with Jake and Sean. We can't seriously be taking him with us. You got a better idea? He knows the way. You're saying we should trust this guy? I'm saying we need this guy. Jake's right. We're asking for trouble if we bring him. We've got no idea what his angle is. My point exactly. If I thought there was a better way to bring back Diego, don't you think I'd do it? It's our fault he's gone, Shams. I've got to do whatever it takes to bring him back. If you're not willing to come if he's there, well, I understand. Sean walks off, leaving you and Jake. Guess we're stuck with Rourke. Maybe, but either way, I guarantee you, I'll be keeping my eye on him. There's no keeping your eye on Rourke. He's playing 12th dimensional chess with you. You pack what you can carry for the dangerous journey ahead to rescue Diego from the Watchers. Hmm. I should definitely take this. You put the Amber Idol from Rourke's museum into your bag and zip it up. Through the shattered bedroom window, a brutally hot sun bakes you. The cool breeze is long gone. Sweat forms on your brow. Jeez, it's hot. There's a knock at your door. Quinn peeks her head in. Everyone's downstairs. We're all ready to go. You got everything? Last time we'll be here for a while. Yeah, I'm gonna miss this place. <laughs> I know I've only been here six days now, but it almost started to feel like home. We certainly made some memories here. <laughs> she nods toward your bed and winks. We sure did. You wipe at the sweat on your brow. It's over a hundred degrees right now. I thought it was supposed to be December. Must be a heat wave. Nothing about time on this island makes sense. I don't expect it to start now. You'll definitely want to wear the right outfit for this trip. Yeah, no, I definitely want to wear this outfit. <laughs> I will choose this look. Look chosen. How do I look? Ready to face the heat. All set? You take one last look at your room. All set. You head out into the hall and close the door behind you. And we're traveling to the western rainforest. Later that day, you're trudging through the rainforest. The blinding sun glares down. It's gotta be 120 degrees and a thousand percent humidity. That's neither how percentages nor humidity work. Nevertheless, I concur. It's so bright, I can hardly see. And if I have to hear about Craig being sticky one more time, but I am sticky, feel. I absolutely will not feel. I know it's hot, but come on, guys. Diego, he's counting on us. Never give up. Never surrender. No matter how toasty it gets outside, we're coming for you, Diego. Oh, we're friends now. Yay. 
I don't know what you guys are talking about. I'm feeling great. You know, I really want to hate you right now, Shams. But I can't, because you look too damn fly. I know. The sooner we get there, the sooner we can stop walking. Doesn't that sound pleasant? Now hurry up. Mr. Rourke, you're not even sweating. How is that possible? Impeccable conditioning. Bet you just Botox your damn sweat gland shut. Suddenly, you double over in pain. A throbbing headache pounds in your skull. Visions flash before your eyes as real as anything you've known. This river looks pretty deep. How are we supposed to get across? I had my people search all over the world for you, but we could never find you. Shams, you don't even understand how much you just saved my life. Check it out. I found something at the bottom. Damn. Couldn't you just stay here forever? The headache fades. Your friends continue on ahead. None of them appear to have noticed. Are you all right, Shams? I... This river looks pretty deep. How are we supposed to get across? Huh? Wait. You look up to see that your group has arrived at the banks of a rushing river. Iris, how did I know Quinn was going to say that? I saw all these... visions. Scanning. I detect a disturbance in the tachyon field. It seems that we have entered a time loop. Such phenomena normally cannot be sensed by humans. Yet, apparently, you can see it. Hold on, what do you mean a time loop? A period of approximately 12 minutes will repeat indefinitely. Even this very conversation, should you choose to have it again. We're stuck here forever? How do we break the loop? There must be a source of the time disturbance nearby. You must destroy it to escape the loop. I've got to tell the others. Warning, informing them of the temporal vortex may cause irreparable damage to space-time. Seriously? I can't tell them about it without reality caving in on itself? You're saying I'm on my own. Yes, though there may yet be ways to use the others to your advantage. Okay, first things first. Gotta find the source of the time loop. I can do this. Over here, guys. There's a fallen tree going all the way across. We can use it as a bridge. Your group lines up single file to cross the river over the moss-covered log. Let's cross with Alistair. You line up behind Alistair, following him, and Grace across. Alistair takes Grace's hand. Study now. Look straight ahead rather than down. It improves your balance and sense of horizon. I, I think it's working. You wobble, barely able to keep balance on the wet, messy, wet, mossy wood. Whoa! When you fall into the river like a buffoon, Shams, I beg of you, Please do not allow the water to splash me. How on earth are you balancing so well? Simple. I alone brought very few possessions on this trip. I have no interest in materialism. My bag is nearly empty. Thus, I am unencumbered while you drag yourself down with silly trinkets. All right, then. With everyone across the river, your group continues. Rourke whistles cheerfully to himself. Well, we're going to talk to Mr. Work. I got questions for you. All right, Work. You promised me some answers. Do you know what business I'm in? I don't know. Resorts? I dabble. But mainly, I'm in the business of information. And that means I don't give it away for free. I expect a trade. I'll answer one question of yours, 
only one. But first, you'll answer one of mine. Fair? Fair. My question is very simple. What is your name? It's, it's Shams. 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 What a delicious name. I had my people search all over the world for you, and we could never find you. To realize that all this time you were a student at Hartford like Alistair. Let's just say if we survive this, I'll be firing my intelligence staff. All right, you've gotten more than enough out of us today. My turn to ask questions. I want to ask... Where is everyone? The guests at the, at the Celestial, what happened to them? We know they went to the emergency shelter, but there was no trace after that. When it became clear that Mount Tropa was to erupt in a cataclysmic event, I ordered a full evacuation. I can only pray that they all made it out safely. That's all you're getting out of me for now. We must focus on the road ahead. Work shoes you away, you smile to yourself. Jake is standing high atop a boulder, peering northeast. He hops down. It's not as clearing out that way to the right. The river ends in this beautiful lake if you follow it a bit. Hmm. Might be helpful to send someone to get our bearings. I could go. It does look beautiful out there. You want some company? Yes. <laughs> You and Jake follow the river up to the clearing. A gorgeous, shimmering lake sparkles before you. Wow, it's beautiful. Yeah, I could say that. It sounds like snow to you. In the distance, the mountain ranges gleam. The mountain range gleams white in the sun. You're right. In the middle of a heat wave, I didn't think the mountains here were tall enough for that. Yeah, cause they're not. He leads you over to the base of the mountain, where snow is piled up in the shade. You reach down and scoop up a handful. Three of ten clues. It is snow. This place is making less and less sense every minute. Jake steps to the water's edge and skips a pebble across its placid surface. You join him under the blistering sun. Damn hot out. Could use a minute to cool off. I think we should have a snowball fight. <laughs> Before Jake can react, you pick up a small scoop of snow and peg him with it. A sneak attack? Ah, oh, you little... Bet you can't catch me. In a flash, you and Jake are hurling little snowballs at each other, diving and rolling out of the way. At last, you hit Jake square in the face with the snowball. He grins and lets himself fall into the snowbank. You got me, I give up. You dive into the snowbank after him. You sure surrender easy, don't you? Only to you. Lying on your back, you look over at Jake and... Kiss him! You turn in the bed of snow to face him, leaning close. Your lips meet, and the heat of your kiss seems to melt all the snow around you. I accept nothing but unconditional surrender. Well, I don't want to make this too easy for you. You fall back into another kiss. The two of you return from the lake. You catch up with the rest of your group as they approach an ancient, eroded stone pillar. Who do I talk to? Dr. Craig. You wander over, joining Craig on the long hike. He wipes sweat from his brow. Dude, this is garbage. It's so hot. Can we take a break? You're tired because you waste, you're wasting energy complaining. You waste energy beating your ass, geezer. Come on, there's some awesome shade over there from that stone pillar thing. Yeah, 
let's all take a quick break. Finally, everyone's relieved to sit down. Alistair slumps against a tree, throwing his bag aside. Craig leans against the shady side of the stone pillar. Sweet, sweet shade. This is heaven right now. <sighs> Craig's weight against the pillar shifts the stone blocks. The pillar begins to topple over. Alistair, look out! Alistair scrambles out of the way, just as... Crash! The pillar shatters into a mound of rubble. You nitwit! You utter simpleton! You just crushed my bag! My bee, dude! Alistair dumps out the few contents of his bag. Fortunately, I had next to nothing in there. I could have had much more. Hmm. Maybe we should keep moving before we destroy more ancient priceless artifacts. But nap time. Uh. In a flash, you're back at the riverbank. This river looks pretty deep. How are we supposed to get across? Whoa, that must have been the time loop. I need to think about what I learned and make progress each time. Over here, guys, there's a fallen tree going all the way across. We can use it as a bridge. Your group lines up single-filed across the river over the moss-covered log. Across with Michelle this time. You line up behind Michelle to cross the mossy log. She easily dances across to the far side. Ah, oh, damn it, I just lost a contact lens. Yeesh. Can I help you look? That's a really low percentage. Why? So you can laugh at me? Just leave me alone. I don't need you. You shrug and keep walking, thinking to yourself. Hmm. Maybe I'll have better luck next time. She won't remember when the time loops, after all. With everyone at the river, your group continues. Rourke whistles cheerfully to himself. All right, Rourke, you promised me some answers. Do you know what business I'm in? My business is information. Yeah, I got it. You tell me one thing, I tell you one thing. Deal. Straight to the point, I see. Then tell me. You want to know my name? It's Shams. My turn. I want to ask. You know what the tube was. What was that radio call we heard? The one you heard over the satellite array in the observatory, yes. I strongly suspect that was an echo from our planet's likely future. An echo from the future? Yes, right now we are in a bubble of time, safe for the moment. But an eruption of Mount Atropo risks plunging the planet itself into a prehistoric time when all the world was lava. Civilization would immediately be engulfed in the fire of a bygone era. That, my young friend, is what I need your help to prevent. That's all you're getting out of me for now. We must focus on the road ahead. Rourke shoes you away. You smile to yourself. That's all I can ask him this time, but he won't remember once time looper sets. <laughs> you notice Jake and Estella peering out toward the lake in the clearing. Hmm, should I ask them about visiting the lake again? Sure. Let's go with Jake again. Gorgeous shimmering lake. Skips a pebble across its placid surface. Blistering sun. Damn hot out. Can you use a minute to cool off? <laughs> I think we should swim in the lake. You both strip down and wade into the crisp, cool water of the lake. You feel instantly refreshed. Damn, couldn't you just stay here forever? More than you know. <laughs> Growing up in Louisiana, I used to swim in the bayou all the time. We had to clear out real quick if a gator showed up, though. You miss home, don't you? Hmm, <laughs> nah. Not much back there for me anymore. The cold lake water begins to chill your bones. 
you feel yourself tremble. You shivering? Maybe. Here, I'll warm you up. Jake takes you in his arms, floating there together in the pristine water. You... Care some! Your hand moves up to Jake's chest, over his neck, running your fingers through his hair. Then you pull him in, kissing him deeply. He picks you up in the water, never breaking the kiss. Feeling warmer? You could say that. The two of you return from the lake. You catch up with the rest of your group as they approach an ancient, eroded stone pillar. Uh, with Craig again. You wander over, joining Craig on the long hike. He wipes sweat from his brow. Dude, this is garbage. It's so hot. Can we take a break? You're tired because you're wasting energy complaining. You're wasting energy beating your, you're beating your ass. Blah, blah, blah. Stone pillar. Yes, let's take a break. Sure. Finally. Alistair slumps his, against a tree, throwing his back aside. Craig is going to break the, the pillar. Alistair, look out. Alistair scrambles out of the way. You crushed my bag. Could have had much more in there. Hmm. Keep moving, but nap time. And we're back at the beginning. <laughs> in a flash, you're back at the riverbank. This river looks pretty deep. How are we supposed to get across? I'm still searching for the source of the time loop. Iris said it's somewhere around here, but where? It must be somewhere left, less obvious, hidden where I can't see. Stella finds the tree. We're going to cross over. I'm going to cross over with Michelle again because we're still looking for... We're, we're trying to get her to accept our help. <laughs> Damn it, I just lost a contact lens. Can I help you look? She sizes you up for a moment. Ugh, fine. So long as you agree... I never asked for help. You get on your hands and knees beside Michelle and the two of you comb through the long grass. This is impossible. Wait, hold on, I found it, here. Shams, you don't even understand how much you just saved my life. Whoa, there, there's something else here too. You reach your hand to the grass, closing your fingers around something small and bright red. the hell is that? Jake spots you and takes a knee by your side. Oh, looky here. That's a 12-gauge armor-piercing shell casing. It's for the USAS 12 automatic shotgun. I'm gonna tell you, it's some heavy-duty firepower. Hell, my old black ops squad used those. So you're saying whoever fired it meant business. Or of tin clues. It's an understatement. With everyone across the river, your group continues. Rourke whistles cheerfully to himself. See, now that's a cool thing that we found. Um, but I'm not... It doesn't really seem like the thing that would be causing a time loop. So, I promise you some answers. Businesses, information, yeah. Okay, so tell me my name is Shams. I want to ask... Why did you bring us here? I presume this would be your question. During the most recent expansion of the Celestial's facilities, a worker discovered a photograph buried in the sands. It was dated to be 500 years old, despite the art of photography only having existed for 200. Photographed therein were 11 young people. All of you, except Alistair. I knew you must somehow be critical to solving this island's mysteries. Why not just tell us that? Frankly, I intended to. I intended to enlist your help to save the world. Clearly, the world had other plans. That's all you're getting out of me for now. All right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Go 
ahead like one more time to Jake. Relax, drink the chilled water. Now, oh, princess, I think that's about the best water I've ever tasted. He skips rocks across the lake, making a string of perfectly circular ripples across its mirrored surface. You're pretty good at that. Growing up in rural Louisiana, me and my sister had a lot of practice entertaining ourselves. Life could get a little boring. Your sister? You don't talk about her much. Nope. One day I'll tell you all about her. Jake turns and smiles at you, his hair tuss tussling in the wind. Kiss him. <laughs> you push Jake down on the ground and straddle him. You lean down and kiss him deeply. Then you sit up, your hands on his chest, and give him a wink. What is that for? Not that I'm complaining. Just wanted to make sure life wasn't getting too boring for you. Around you? I don't even think that's possible. Alright. Let's do the thing again. Okay. <laughs> You go through this thing again with the stone pillar. Yeah, we're gonna take a quick break. Sweet, sweet shade. We're gonna knock it over. Oh no, I'll start like out. I'm crunching the bag, and that seems important because there's a whole bunch of words in green about it. <laughs> so now for this last time. Back on the riverbank. We're going to go across the log. haven't crossed over with Zara yet. It's total bull. I do not do the outdoors. You can make it, Zara. I know I can make it. I'm just a little out of my element. Whoa! Zara Teeter is about to fall in. Now, what I would normally do is grab her. But I want to get out of this time loop, so we're going to let her fall. Loses her balance, goes headfirst into the river. Ugh, thanks for the help, Shams. No sweat. Uh, could someone give me a hand up? There's something glowing at the bottom of the river. Get me out of here. We help her back onto the log. What was it? No idea. But it's way down there. And even if I wanted to find out, I'm nowhere near a good enough swimmer to dive that deep. Ask some more questions. All right, Rourke. My business is information. All right, all right. Okay. My name is Shams. I want to ask. Tell me about the sea monster. What is up with that? <laughs> Cetus. It has a name. Roughly translated from thousands of years ago, a name of legend. But as you've no doubt seen, the beast is far more than legend. It wasn't so tough. It blew it out of the water with a little plastic explosive. A cocky one, aren't you? It has survived far more dangerous foes than you, little friend. It only reemerged in the last week before your arrival. I've no doubt the two of you shall meet again. That's all you're getting out of me for now. You must focus on the road ahead. Work shoes you away. You smile to yourself. All right. Should I ask him about visiting the lake again? Sure. Ah, uh, I can't go a third time. You know what? We are going to go with Estella because we can can rack up some 
some relationship points with her and we will need those later <laughs> because we don't always get along. A gorgeous shimmering lake. This heat is unbearable. I'd sure love to cool off a bit. <laughs> he didn't even notice the snow. We're gonna have a snowball fight. Before Stella can react, pick up a small scoop of snow and peg her with it. Ah. Gotcha. Oh, okay. It is so on. In a flash, you and Estella are hurling little snowballs at each other, diving and rolling out of the way. Finally, Estella tackles you into the snowbank. You come to a rest, breathing hard. You know, this is the first time in my life I've seen snow. Seriously? What about Hartfeld? It snows there. I transferred in after winter quarter, so I missed it all. Maybe this year we could spend some time in the snow together. Lying on your back, you look over at Estella and... Promise her! We're not romancing Estella. I promise. When we get back, I'll give you the full winter quarter experience. Estella smiles and gazes up at the brilliant sky. Can't wait. Return to the lake. Stone pillar. I'm gonna talk to Sean this time. I'm gonna switch it up. Jog forward to join Sean. Hey there, Shams. Hot as hell, isn't it? Kinda wishing I jumped in the river back there. I would have liked to see you fall in. Yeah, but that's because you want this whole expedition to turn into a wet t shirt contest. The current looks pretty fast. Fortunately, I'm a strong swimmer. Back during sophomore year, I blew my knee. I took a lot of rehab, a lot of which was swimming. I always thought there was something really calming about it. It centered me. Hey, you know, Zara said she saw something in the river. Think you could grab it for me? Sure thing. You and Sean return to the riverbank. He pulls off his shirt. Looks deep. But I should be able to get down there. Sean dives in with hardly a splash. He's under for what feels like five minutes. And then... Check it out! I found something at the bottom. Sean climbs out of the river and puts something heavy and smooth in your hands. Ooh! Okay! Examine that! It's another one of those glowing orbs, like we found in the abandoned mining tunnels. Touching this one isn't doing anything, but it still feels like there's some kind of energy running through it. You carry the orb in your hands. Hmm. This has to be what's causing the time loop. I need to destroy it. But how? You smash it as hard as you can against a rock. What are you doing? Trying to break it, obviously. We see that, but why? Because... Lyra said I could really mess up the time continuum if I tell them. Because I have anger issues? Truth. I feel you. Well, could you please not destroy something that could be important? The others walk away. If only they could know how important it is. And we're back on the river bank. Okay, I'm a little tired of this. Let's let's do this and finish it. The crystal orb Sean found is in your hands. The orb stayed with me. It didn't go back in the river when time reset. It must exist outside time, like me. Over here, guys. There's a fallen tree going all the way across. We can use it as a bridge. Your group lines up single file to cross the river over the moss covered log. You know what? We're gonna cross with Alistair. Alistair of the famously empty bag. You line up behind Alistair, following him and Grace across. Alistair takes Grace's hand. Study now. Look straight ahead rather than down. It improves your balance and sense of horizon. I, I think it's working. You wobble, barely able to keep balance on the wet, mossy wood. Whoa! 
you fall into the river like a buffoon, Shams, I beg of you. Please do not allow the water to splash me. How on earth are you balancing so well? It's simple. I alone brought very few possessions on this trip. I have no interest in materialism. My bag is nearly empty. Thus, I am unencumbered while you drag yourself down with silly trinkets. In that case, think you carry this for me? Show Alistair the blue crystal orb. Another one of those damned things. Wait a moment. What makes you think I'd carry something for you? Because I'll put in a good word for you with grace. Give it here. Alistair puts the crystal orb into his bag. But then when across the river, your group continues. Rourke whistles cheerfully to himself. <sighs> One last chance to talk to him. All right, Rourke. Promise me some answers. Do you know what business I'm in? My business is information. Yeah, I got it. You tell me one thing, I tell you one thing. Deal. Straight to the point, I see. Then tell me, if you want to know my name, it's Shams. My turn. I want to ask... I mean, obviously the time portal gun was a time portal gun. <laughs> Watch with all the secret doors. We keep finding these secret passages and rooms all over the hotel. The library, that weird museum, the security office behind the game room. Needless to say, once I uncovered the true perils of La Huerta, I needed to remodel the resort. You should have closed it. And invite the scrutiny of my rivals, who could try to steal the island for their own nefarious purposes? No, it had to stay open. That's all you're getting out of me for now. Focus, focus, shoe. Okay. We're not resetting the time loop, we're ending the time loop. But we're gonna go to Blake with Estella again. Because, why the hell not? <sighs> Heat is unbearable, love to cool off. Let's relax and drink the chilled water. Let's take it easy. <laughs> Man, did I need this. Isn't this peaceful? Peaceful. I guess I never really knew peace. Cartel violence in Colombia. Civil war in San Trubita. Peace like this. It almost makes me uneasy. At least when you're at war, you know where everyone stands. You know where I stand, Estella. She turns to face you. Do I? Comfort her. Yes. I'll be right here. By your side, no matter what. I guess you're right. I do know that. All right, time to end this. Stone Pillar, talk to Craig. He wipes sweat from his brow. Dude, this is garbage. It's so hot. Can we take a break? You're tired because you're wasting energy complaining. I'm gonna waste energy beating your ass, geezer. Come on, there's some awesome shade over there from that stone pillar thingy. Let's all take a quick break. Finally. Everyone's relieved to sit down. Alistair slumps against a tree, throwing his bag aside. Craig leans against the shady side of the stone pillar. Sweet, sweet shade. This is heaven right now. Craig's weight against the pillar shifts the stone blocks. The pillar begins to topple over. Alistair, look out! Alistair scrambles out of the way just as... <sighs> the pillar shatters into a mound of rubble. You nitwit! You utter simpleton! You just crushed my bag! My bee, dude! Alistair dumps out the contents of his bag, including... The crystal orb now cracked in two and colored a dull gray. That's it. I destroyed the source of the time loop. Apologies for your belonging, Shams, but... I did it! Oh, uh, what now? 
Don't worry about it. Can we keep going now? Yes, now we can. The group heads out. As you walk past the rubble, you get a closer look at the split orb, the way it's cleaved in two. And somehow it feels familiar. Where have I seen that before? Your eyes meet Rourke's, and you know he recognizes it too. His mouth splits into a grin. Hmm. Hey, Shams, you see that over there? Sean points in the distance. The glint of gold sparkles in the sun, high in the trees. Come on, let's check it out. With the time loop broken, you're finally able to push forward through the rainforest. There's definitely something up there in the branches. It's another catalyst idol. This one has an eagle's head and wings. I see it. It's one of those amber idols like in Rourke's museum. Want me to climb up there and grab it for you? Yes. Get me that idol. Your wish is my command. With incredible athleticism, Sean jumps and grabs the bottom branch, pulling himself up. He quickly scales the tree. Careful up there. Don't worry about me, I'm almost at the top already. Whoa! Shams, you're not going to believe this. The tree looks like it's grown around the idol. It's like it's part of the tree. How is that possible? Can you even get it out? Yeah, if I just pull real hard. Got it! Sean yanks the idol free from the tree's bark and climbs down. Here you go. Just like last time, the moment you touch the idol, you find yourself thrown through space and time. Suddenly, you're in a college apartment. The LCD clock in the microwave reads 2.13 a.m. Sean rubs his eyes, exhausted, slouched over a pile of economics homework after a long day of practice, classes, and his work-study job. Equilibrium, price, and quantity if demand is... His phone buzzes from a text, and the screen lights up with the word, Mom. Your dad asks about you again. He misses you. Sean shakes his head and tosses the phone aside. A key unlocks the door. Craig walks in, looking anxious. Dude, I am so screwed. Now Coach asks about the rumors that the sports agent guy was giving free stuff to players... Well, Craig opens his backpack to show Sean a brand new, high-end laptop. Craig! Dude, why'd you take it? You know if the NCAA finds out you're taking free stuff, you'll lose your scholarship. You'll be kicked off the team. I know. I'm an idiot, okay? I just really wanted to play this computer game with a girl in my calc class. My old laptop sucked, sucked too hard to handle the graphics, and... You know my fam can't afford a decent one. Craig slumps on the couch and hangs his head. No, I shouldn't have taken it, but now I'm screwed. Someone saw me with it and ratted me out. I'm already on thin ice with Coach. Now I'm done for. As soon as he proves I took this laptop. He won't. Sean slides the laptop out of Craig's bag and puts it into his own. Because I'm the one who took it from the agent. Dude, What? I can't let you take the fall from me. You'll get in so much trouble. I can handle it. You can't. Coach can't kick me off the team. So let me do this. I need you on that field. You're more than my teammate. You're my brother. I've got this. I owe you, man. I owe you everything. You're slingshot forward through time, reality warping all around you until... Sean waves his arms wildly. Over here! Over here, big guy! Look at me! Rah, that's our friend the saber-toothed tiger! Sean, what are you doing? Sean distracts the saber-tooth away from your friends, leading it toward the cliff edge. Don't worry about me. Run! I can handle it! The saber-tooth pounces, pinning Sean to the dirt right by the precipice. 
Sean uses all his strength, gripping the tiger's fangs, wrestling it toward the edge. Don't do it, man! Sean, please! No! I've got this! With that, Sean rolls over the edge of the cliff, taking the tiger with him. They vanish out of sight. So we found two of these so far, and they've matched up with the, the Hadean Zodiac thing that, were, that was associated with our, our friends. And in each of them, we've seen a scene from the past that's like important or shows their character in a specific way or shows how their personality was shaped in a specific way. And then it fast forwards and we see them die. So that's grim. Shams, you all right? Sean. Overcome, you pull Sean into a hug. He hesitates at first, then hugs you back. Over Sean's shoulder, you gaze at the amber idol, still clenched in your white-knuckled grip. That's the second idol. You two, you're falling behind. Keep up. The hostile stronghold is just over this ridge. You and Sean rejoin the group, trudging up the steepening slope. And then, carried over the wind. Do you guys hear that? Is that... horns? You all break into a sprint, racing up the hill. The forest grows thinner, sunlight shining through gaps in the canopy. In the distance, you catch sight of an, an impossibly enormous tree rising into the sky. You finally emerge from the overgrowth, gaining a clearer view. <sighs> okay. That's what I call a treehouse. <laughs> The Watcher's village is carved into the side of an absurdly massive tree the size of a skyscraper. I can't believe what I'm seeing. It's impossible. Trees have never grown that large. Not yet, you mean. But one day they will. The horns blast again, and far below you see a small phalanx of Watchers marching out of the village base. In the center of the group, it's a familiar figure, his hands bound. Is that? It's him. From a distance, you can just make out the figure's face. Damn. Damn. <laughs> so Diego got taken captive and turned hot. All right. <laughs> Diego. He's alive. Chapter two complete. Two of two clues found. Catalyst idol found. All right. So that's the end of chapter two. Um, as you can tell uh, from the, the catalyst idols and the visions you get with them, this one, um, Pulls no emotional punches. <laughs> so that's that's interesting. But I hope you enjoyed it. Um, look at the links in the description below. Click on them if you like. That would be very nice of you. Uh, and I will see you next time. Bye.